This is episode 17 of the Four Faces of Love. We're going to go to our text right away, Ephesians 3, 17, 18, and 19. Here it is, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Now, we said that breadth has to do with generosity, generous. Then we said that length has to do with guarding or reproof, warning, and warning is not a correction. They're different. They may sound the same, but they're not. And uh, so God will go to any length to protect his children. We see him doing that with his covenant people many, many times. Depth has to do with correction, meaning that the foundation beneath our feet is not what it ought to be, so it has to be corrected. So we need to be corrected. Uh, correction has no association with destruction. And a lot of people don't know that. There are a lot of people who see tragedy, sickness, disease that steals, kills, or destroys. They see that as some kind of correction from God. Listen to John 10.10. These are the words of Jesus, and what he said counts. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So if it steals, if it kills, if it destroys... God did not send it. You know, there's a story in the scriptures about the, um, a man named Job. It's uh, considered to be the oldest book in the Bible. The events are not the oldest things in the Bible recorded, but it is the oldest written book in the Bible, more than likely. And uh, the destruction that is mentioned in the book didn't come from God. God had nothing to do with it. The destruction came from Satan. When God appeared to Job at the end of the book, to correct some of the errors in his thinking and to correct errors in his belief system, what did God use? God didn't come back in with more stealing, killing, and destroying, saying, okay, Job, I have to correct you now, so get ready. There's more tragedy coming. No, that isn't what happened. God used words. That's how God corrects. God corrects with his words. Psalm 94, 12, blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teaches him out of your law. Now, correction is a process by which we learn what God accepts and what he does not. So let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 12, and we're going to take a look at correction. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For the Lord loves whom he chastens, and he scourges every son whom he receives. So how does God do it? He does it with his word. His word is what corrects us. Now, there are times when God backs off and does not support things that we do. God is not bound to bless every single thing that we set out to do. So there are times when things we set out to do fail or we stumble, or we experience difficulty. That doesn't mean that God is sending that or causing that. It means that He is not blessing everything that we want to do. And then when we seek Him, we may find out there's a better way or a different way than than we're to proceed. If you endure chastening, Hebrews 12, 7 says, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? I'll give you a great case in point. Children's ministry has never been a ministry that gets a lot of support. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, when I was on all over America with the Gospel Bill Show, there was one church, just one, that gave toward the Gospel Bill Show on a regular basis. They gave me $100 a month. That's it. One church in the whole country. Now, I had to make money in order to make the Gospel Bill Show work. I had to hustle. I became, in effect, a businessman with the things that I created, with products I made, with things that I sold, and that's how we paid for our television ministry. Now, because we didn't get a lot of support and because things were usually very tight, I got in the habit of running behind in my bills. And it went on like that for quite some time. We went that way for several years. Finally, I got a belly full of it, and I said, we're going to fix this. We were about 350000 behind in our bills. 
I took this to our church, which at that time we had started a few years before, and the church responded generously, and we wiped out the $350,000 in bills. Then, when we got done, my business administrator, who had resigned on his way out the door, told his follower, the one who was taking over, there's another $350,000 that I didn't tell Pastor about. Wow. And he didn't share any of that with me. It was crushing, but it woke me up and it made me realize, okay, I can't go back to the church to ask for more. We've already done that. I'm going to have to make some changes. And I said, you know, how did we get into this hole? And I said to myself, you know, we obviously are doing some things that God isn't blessing. I know a lot of people said we really like it, but my kids' magazine never paid a penny. We didn't get any support for that magazine. It was a foolish thing for me to do. There were some other things that we did. I had to lay off 21 employees. We were fat. We had too many people on our team. I had to go to my landlord and to get out of some leases so we could trim back with not having those 21 people. There were a number of offices we did not need. Landlord was very generous because I had leased so much space from him for so many years. And so he helped me greatly. But the point that I want to make is I got our ship righted and turned around when we took stock and when we corrected ourselves. It was painful, but it was not destructive. The end result was we became very sound and blessed financially. So when I say to you that God doesn't correct us with circumstances, I don't mean that he blesses everything that you and I set out to do, but there are times when he does not bless what we're about to do, and that's where some of our correction comes in. He said, but if you are without chastening, all which have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. He goes on to say, furthermore, we've had fathers, human fathers who corrected us. We paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live. Pay attention to this one, Hebrews 12, 10. For they indeed for a few days chastened us as it seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. He wants to make us more like him, and so he chastens us through his word. And God will speak to you when you go to him and say, and I, and I did, Lord, where are we missing it? And he showed me where we were missing it. It was something I really didn't want to bring up, didn't even want to talk about. I bulled my way through thinking we can keep doing what we're doing, and it didn't work. And so finally, I developed a willingness. Uh, the Scripture says in Isaiah 1, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. I had to develop a willingness to hear God in that area of my life. And so it is important that we need to learn how to think like God. Listen to Isaiah Chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So there's a very real possibility that some of your ways of thinking don't agree with God's ways of thinking. And I had to learn that myself, and I'm still learning that. Because it takes a lifetime to really understand how God thinks. And, and, and it's something that we grow in. It starts out in childhood. Listen to Proverbs 19, 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. In other words, not knowing God's ways is something that we all start out with. But the rod of correction, which is God's authority, drives it far from him. And so it is this controlled correction in circumstances, not destruction, and it is the teaching of God's Word. Those two things together correct you. Now, again, I want to make it very clear. Death, stealing, killing, that is not God. God does not use those things to correct us. If we fall into that, it's because we ran through a series of roadblocks which put us in harm's way. It wasn't the Lord who brought that about. Well, that's all the time I have for this teaching, but we're not done. We've got three more lessons on this, and we'll pick up with the first one tomorrow. See you then.
I want to thank you for watching our podcast today. And if you really liked it, would you please give us a little thumbs up by clicking on that sign down below? And then I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future podcasts because they're all going to be good. And if you would like to support us financially, either with a one-time gift or recurring gift, you can do that by clicking on the link below or going to myfaithroots.com. Thank you so much for watching this program.